Welcome to my presentation on the Friar in Act 2 of Romeo and Juliet. And this is part 2 of my presentation on the Friar. Some things that I will discuss throughout this um, presentation have to do with time compression. The Friar is Romeo's friend and priest. The Romeo has shared his feelings for Rosaline with the friar and the friar has given him advice. Romeo has made a complete change and shows us that he's a round character. We have foreshadowing, dramatic irony, rhyming couplets that show um, that the passages are important. We have situational ethics and the golden mean. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head, so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. When these words are said, the friar has just finished his soliloquy, and um, he was up picking uh, plants, herbs, and flowers that he will use to make um, various medicine and potions and he's placing them in his basket as he's doing this. Romeo comes running up to him. He is quite surprised because as we know Romeo is the young man that when the sun came up he went home and locked himself in his room and made himself an artificial knight. So it's not typical to see Romeo up so early in the morning. The friar thinks he must have a distempered head which means a troubled mind and he wants to know well why Romeo would be up he says that it's only old men who can't sleep um, young men typically have no problem sleeping so we have a little bit of alliteration here so sweet saluted distempered head is troubled mind we have a pun with sleep will never lie you know you have to lie down to sleep and we also have personification care keeps his watch in every old man eye. so care is being personified with the pronoun his but where unbruised youth with us unstuffed brain such couch his limbs their golden sleep doth reign therefore thy Earliness does me assure thou art uprise with some distemperature, or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo has not been in bed tonight. So young men are supposed to be able to sleep soundly because they have unstuffed brains, and it says um, distemperature here means illness. He thinks as Romeo is up so early maybe he's not well and then he thinks again and says well I have a feeling you haven't been in bed at all tonight which is the right answer Romeo says that last is true the sweeter rest was mine God pardon sin was thou with Rosaline with Rosaline my ghostly father no I have forgot that name and that name's woe that's my good son, but where hast thou been then? So, um, Romeo says he wasn't in bed, but he had even sweeter rest, which makes the friar think that, uh, which makes the friar think that maybe Romeo hooked up with Rosaline. That's why he says, God pardon sin. Was thou with Rosaline? He thinks that maybe they finally hooked up. And Romeo says, no, I forgot that name and that name's woe, which is the complete change. Romeo has blanked Rosaline out of his mind, basically. So the friar wants to know, well, where have you been? I'll tell thee ere thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with my enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me. and." That's by me wounded. Both are remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise does my foe. 
the most important part of this is that Romeo says he's been partying with his enemy, which is true. He was at the Capulet party. Um, and he was wounded there. He was wounded by, not by a sword, but by Cupid's arrow. And the good news is that he was not only wounded, but so was Juliet wounded. And now they need some medicine. They need the friar to help them. The friar is quite confused. He says, be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession, confession finds but riddling shrift. So, rightly so, the friar doesn't know what's going on. He wants Romeo to make plain what's happened. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. This is a, an example of um, chiasmus, which is when you have a syntactical pattern where you have, um, you would say, this is A, B, C. And if you notice on the other side, it's C, B, and A. So it's the same words, just in reverse order. And this is epanalypsis with the use of combined and combined again. But the most important part of this is that Romeo is saying that um, he has fallen in love with Capulet's daughter. And he wants to be combined with Capulet's daughter. By holy marriage. So it's not just about sex. They want to get married. They want to do the right thing. And you have an example of polysyndeton here. When and where and how we met, we wooed, and made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. So you have um, anaphora with we and we, and you have alliteration with we, we, and wooed. Um, and we find out that they met last night not even 12 hours ago and they want to get married today I love this exclamation it says holy Saint Francis what a change is here is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear so soon forsaken young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts but in their eyes Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine hast washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it doth not taste. So the exclamation shows that the friar is shocked. He can't curse, so he invokes the name of a saint and he says, is Rosaline that thou didst, you loved her so much and you've just thrown her to the side? Um, young men love their lies not in their heart, but young men only love what they see. They don't love deeply with their hearts. L what a deal of brine, how much salt water, how much tears have you cried over this girl and now it was all a waste. You, you cried so much for this woman, but nothing has come of it. The sun not thy not yet thy sighs from heaven clears. Thy old groan rings yet in mine ears. Lo, here upon thy cheek the stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. These are all hyperbolic phrases. When he's saying, you know, um, the sun hasn't even cleared away your your sighs, or um, I can still hear your groaning in my ears. Obviously, that's hyperbole. Um, I can still see the stains of the tears that you cried for Rosaline on your cheek. I hope Romeo washed his face before he went to the party. So all of this is hyperbole. If ever thou wast thyself and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. Tremendous amount of alliteration with um, thou, thyself, these, thine, thou, these. 
Um, but most importantly, he says, and art thou changed? So once again, points us with a flashing red light towards the fact that Romeo has made a complete change and is therefore a round card character. The last thing he says, women may fall when there's no strength in men. Women cannot be virtuous if men cannot be loyal. Thou chidest me off for loving Ra Rosaline, for doting, not for loving pupil mine, and bidst me bury love, not in a grave to lay one in and out another out to have. I pray thee, chide me not. Her I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. The most important part of this is that the friar had um, warned Romeo that he should forget about Rosaline. And he's shocked that she he forgot about her but immediately picked up a new girl. And then Romeo says the difference is that she feels about me exactly the way I feel about her. Oh, she knew well, thy love did read by rote that could not spell. Your love was insincere. You were just mouthing love, but you weren't really feeling love. Come, young waver, come, go with me. In one aspect, I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. This is the example of situational ethics. It's wrong for the friar, a holy man, to participate in this marriage behind the backs of the parents. But he's doing it because he feels there's a greater good, that he has a more substantial reason, which is to bring the hatred of the families to an end and bring the two families together. Oh, let us hence. I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. And the friar here is um, foreshadowing when he so, uh, says stumble that run fast. He's foreshadowing the possible doom. And the wisely and, and slow is an indication of the time compression. Everything is going by very, very fast. The golden mean here is with the trying to find a balance between the two extremes, trying to bring these two families together. Um, later on in the act when F Romeo and Juliet come back to be married, the friar says some um, more telling words. So smiles the heaven upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. He's hoping that heavens, which means God or fate, does not punish them for doing this deceitful thing behind the backs of the parents. And Romeo's response is very defiant. He says, but come what sorrow can. Like, well, whatever, you know, the universe wants to do to me, I don't care. It cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death do what he dare. Now, he's thinking about himself. I don't think he ever realizes that if everything goes wrong, that it would also affect Juliet. So you have dramatic irony here. You have love devouring death. Do what he dare. You have personification. It's enough that I but call her mine. So he's only thinking about himself. He's not thinking about what might happen to Juliet. I'm going to skip this slide because I'm running out of time. Time compression, um, everything is moving too fast. The friar and Romeo were intimate friends. Um, the friar had given Romeo good counsel, but it, um, Romeo kind of went even beyond. He forgot about Romeo, he forgot about Ju uh, Rosaline and falls in love with Juliet. Um, he's a round character. There's lots of foreshadowing, dramatic irony. The couplets show that the uh, pa passage is important, and the friar is looking for a balance, and he's doing something deceitful before the right purpose. Okay, bye-bye.